<clears throat> hey, my friends, here we are on the top of Mount Everest. And it's not so bad up here. It's we're almost to the top. And uh, <laughs> uh, I love these virtual backgrounds. Anyway, today's Reddit tip comes to you from it wasn't even a request. It was a guy that asked me a question. This guy asked me a question in the um, comments section and even emailed me and said, hey, how do you do this? How, how would I approach this? And so, bam, this Reddit tip comes to you because of a user or a friend or someone just like you that's using Reddit and wants to kick it up a notch one step smarter, once, uh, you know, we're working smarter and faster so that um, we can spend more time goofing off and also hanging out with our family. Okay, so without any further ado, let me share my screen with you. And here we are in Revit. Okay, this Revit tip is how to cut holes or any shape you want through a deck or, you know, like a wooden deck or even through any beam system. Okay. So, um, I'm going to show that right now. Okay. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Let's go to 3d and look at our fantastic little building. Okay. If you guys recall, it wasn't too long ago that I built a deck and I was showing how you can make a deck, a wooden deck in Revit. Well, this guy says, hey, how do I cut a hole in the deck if I need to cut a, a shape of a hole in through the deck? And that, um, well, another guy asked me that he made a beam system, which is what we're going to do, making our deck. He made a beam system for all of his um, roof joists or ceiling joists. And they were all poking out through the edge of the roof, right up here, sticking out of the roof. And he's like, how do I cut all those off? Shh in one fell swoop rather than doing it one at a time, which is very time consuming. This same technique can be used for both. So here we go. All right, if you recall, we made a deck and I'm gonna go to structural and I'm gonna go to a beam system and I'm going to put a rectangle right here on the ground. There's our deck, okay, ta-da. And it asks over here, I gotta move my face out of the way. On the structural beam system, it wants to know what, I'm gonna lift it up a foot off the ground so it's not in the dirt. The fixed distance, if I have beams every six feet and right here's the beam type, it's a wide flange beam that is a 12 by 24. Well, if I hit apply, that's what we're gonna get over here, okay? So I'm gonna hit done with the checkbox and there we go. We've got beams every six feet and their W shapes. That's not what we want. I want a wooden deck over here. So let me show you. We don't have another, I can't just change this. I can change the, um, the spacing to be like every two feet if I wanted. Boom, see it's, it's happening over there. And I could change it to every six inches, but that really complicates things. We need a beam in here. So what I'm going to do is finish. Um, what I'm going to do is load. I'm going to go to insert and load a family. And when it pops up and it's wanting, um, I'm going to go find. Let's just go up a little bit. Look at this. When you get into your libraries, I'm not going to go into Portuguese library today or Korean library because my Korean is just really not up to speed. So I'm going to go into English Imperial and um, I'm going to go down here to structural um, framing. I'm loading a beam and it's a wood beam. I just want a dimensional lumber. I want a two by six. And so I look at this type, the different types that are available to me and there it is, two by six. I want to load it. I'm going to say, okay. So it loads into the program. And if I click on my beam system over here and I switch out my beam type to be the two by six, ta-da, every six inches, we have a two by six. 
But when these are tipped up on their edge like this, it's really, really hard to walk on, okay? So what we need is a beam. We need these two by sixes rotated on their side, okay? So what I'm gonna do is come down in my families over here and I'm gonna go to structural framing and dimensional lumber. And look, if you look, there's only one two by six in there, okay? Well, I'm gonna duplicate that and call that two by six wood decking, decking, okay? Wood decking. If I double click now on the two by six wood decking, the information that comes up is behind my face and I can't see it. So I'm gonna move my face out of the way. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> the wood decking, let me just show you first. The two by six has got the depth at five and a half inches and the width at one and a half. And, and that's correct, but I want it flipped the other way. So I'm gonna switch over to my wood decking and I need to switch these numbers. I want the depth to be only one and a half and the width to be five and a half. So when I say, okay, I need, I have a new deck, uh, decking a beam. So now I'm gonna click on my beam system and switch the beam type to the wood decking one. And bam, we have every six inches, we have a beam now that is a, this is our deck, okay? Now I know in my other video, I put structure underneath. Um, there were some posts underneath and someone reminded me that I needed beams before I started actually adding joists. And I totally, on girders under there. I totally understand. I was in, a hurry and possibly I don't know much about making decks because I've only repaired decks that were deteriorating in my backyard and I've ne never actually built one from scratch. So some of you guys know more about decks than I do. I'm just going to say that, okay? And so it would behoove us all to um, learn more um, in depth construction techniques for what we're trying to draw in Revit so that we're not just throwing things in here and drawing lines, okay? Because we need to know what we're doing. That's the soapbox and um, I'm with you, okay? So let's just proceed. Now, if I were going to cut a hole in this deck, I totally, we need to cut a hole in this deck. That's wonderful. Now, one of the ways to change the shape of this deck would be to change the perimeter. Let's just say I wanted to cut out an arc, like a big arc out of the side of this thing to shape it, maybe around a tree. We're building a deck around a tree. Let's just say, okay? So if I click on this thing, up at the top, I can hit edit boundary, okay? And you can change the shape of the boundary. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little curve from here to here, like out like that, okay? And then I'm gonna use split to break this line right here. And then I'm gonna use trim to trim from there to the side and there to the side. So I've changed the shape of this, okay? You can see the magenta lines, this is a new shape. And when I check the box, Revit trims off all of those perfectly nice and smooth. Not really. Do you see what it did? It created the beam system, but it held it back and it trimmed them all straight edge. Now, I don't know where there's a button in Revit where I can click and make this a beautiful smooth edge, okay? Because I don't think that button exists. If you guys know where that button is, show me. But because it doesn't exist in my knowledge, to my knowledge, and what if I wanted to cut this a really clean shape, a clean edge. This is where it gets into the reason for the video today. Trimming this thing is not easy in Revit unless you bring in what I discovered is a, a separate family that we're going to go build and bring it in and it's going to cut this. It's a cutter. It's like a, a slicing cutting object, okay? So here we go. This is how we're going to do it. To cut any shape out of this deck that you want, here's the procedure. You click on File, 
and it's behind your face. So you have to move your face out of the way. Most of you won't have a video up and running when you're doing this. So you try to ignore that last comment. Okay, here we go. File, new, family. We're gonna make a new family here, okay? And I wanna, these are the templates. I'm gonna scroll down and I want you to go down to generic face-based template. I'm gonna say, okay, and just hit open. When it opens up, it's looking down top view onto a face of an object. Okay, you're with me. This object is that that we're the face that we're working on will not come in as part of the family into your project. This is just for your use here so that you can align things and get things ready to go. So here we go. I am going to make a circle cutter a big six foot diameter circle cutter that cuts through the wood deck so that we could plant a tree there. I just wanna show you how we would do this. This could be any shape. You guys can make rectangles that are parametric. You guys could do anything with this, any shape you want, but just take the concept and run with it. But here we go. I'm gonna make an extrusion and I'm going, I am today, I'm gonna to click on a circle and I'm gonna make this a three foot radius so that it's a six foot circle, okay? And if I check the box, what it does is it builds a positive object. I'm just gonna go into 3D and show you what it did. There we go. It's a positive shaped object. And it, it doesn't matter how tall this thing is, this is just a solid. And if I load this into my project, we're gonna have one big round thing that's sitting on our deck. That's not what I want. What I'm gonna do is highlight it. And here's the trick, ready? The trick of this is when it's highlighted, you'll notice in the parameters, in the properties, that it is listed as a solid. Well, I want you to switch that to being a void. And then you'll notice that it turns orange over here in the working area, okay? But we also don't want it to go upwards. I want it to go down. So when I place it in Revit, it's going to cut down into the deck. So when I highlight it, instead of it being up here at some, any distance that I dragged it, okay, I want this to go negative and it's gotta go far enough to cut through my one and a half inch joist. So I'm just gonna go down two inches. If you're cutting through something that's thicker, you're gonna have to increase this number, but a minus two is all I need, okay? And when I finish doing that, it's kind of sitting down inside this object, which is perfectly fine. But here's the trick, the checkbox that you're all waiting for. Look in the properties down near the bottom and the property we want to put a checkbox next to is, I'm gonna spread this out so you can see it, cut with voids when loaded. So this family, if you check that box, now when we load it back in the project, any voids in this family, and it technically is only a void, could be, could be other geometry, but I'm not going to do that. The void that's in this family will cut geometry back in the project, okay? So next thing we want to do is save this thing. I'm going to hit save, and I'm going to give it a name like uh, <laughs> deck cutter dash uh, six foot circle, whatever, okay, whatever, call it what you want. I'm going to say save. And now I'm going to load it into my project and close it. So it's going into my project, Boom. It just flies into my project. And the program warns me, oh, we can't create this event, this element in the view, whatever. So I have to go back to 3D. And so here we go. This is my deck where I'm going to show you where we can cut a perfect curve in this thing. Here we go, watch. I want to, wait for it, I'm gonna to go to architecture. I'm gonna to go to component. And the last thing you just created is gonna be up here. Um, but it's, it, try to remember the name of it so you can find it. It is a deck cutter six foot circle, okay? So now, because it's a face hosted object, it, it is trying, it can, I can, I could put it on my wall, see, or on my roof or on my window. I don't, or up on my, I can put it anywhere. But the reason for this video is to show you how to cut through this deck, which is a um, 
a structural deck, a, a beam system. But so look at this. I'm just going to put it in here. Ready? Wait for it. Click. When I put it on there, it's not doing diddly. It's just sitting there, right? And I can move it around. I can drag it around. But it's not cutting it. Why not? Mike, why isn't it cutting? Well, it cuts when you tell it to cut. Okay? It cuts when you tell it to cut. So here we go. We're going to go to modify. And sure enough, in this grouping called geometry, there's a cut. So just pick that button, cut. Now, I want this beam to be cut by this object. Bam. And we just have to do that really fast for other the other beams that it comes into situation with. So here we go. Look, this beam cut by this object. This one by this object. This one cut by this. This one cut by the cutter. This one cut by the cutter. This one cut. I'm telling you, this is faster than anything you've done back. This is the, the way to do it. See that last little edge? This one cut by the cutter. Are you kidding me? Do you guys see what's on screen? A perfect cut. And friends, look, if I move this, it still cuts. Any of those objects that I did the cut command on, it's going to work on. So I can move that cutter wherever I need to on these boards. And if I move it to other boards where it hasn't been cut yet, of course, it's not going to cut through them. And I would have to go back to the cut command. Cut this board with this cutter. Cut the board with the cutter. Cut the board with the cutter. Cut the board with the cutter. Cut, cut the board. I can write a song here. Cut the board with the cutter. Okay, there we go. I think you guys get the point. This is a fantastic way of cutting the actual members of a beam system or your roof or your wall. You can cut objects now, any object with a cutter. So you can go build yourself a cutter shape, slap it on the building, and then use the cut command and pick the two objects. Cut, wow, just like that. All right, I this is a fun tip and I hope it has many applications for you guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. I hope it has many applications for you guys back in the um, back in your projects. Test it. See what you can do with this um, this cutting object in your Revit projects. All right. So if you guys have any questions, just put them in the comments below, and I'll address them, and we'll go from there. All right. Until further ado, you guys have a fantastic day. And if a weekend's coming up for you when you watch this, have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you again on another video. All right. Bye-bye.